YouTube, welcome to the top eight grand finale and the top deck list by watching as long as you can. That greatly supports these videos. We're gonna start this off with Umi Control, which super clapped up you, Bell. If you missed out on it, you should check out that video. It was great. We got the Karyu Shin, Floodgate. We love Floodgates here, right? Are you ready? Begin. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Huh? Set Eclipse and pass. Eclipse is a good way to stop the Floodgate as the Karyu Shin will be face down, but not if we have a C Stealth attack to banish it to dodge the Eclipse. Whoa, what's going on here? This is level five. So what you generally do is you have a legendary ocean to make it level four so that you could normal summon it. I guess we don't have plays. <laughs> Jesus. Fish sonar, add a uh, level seven or lower from your deck. Yup, and uh, that's it. Okay. We're gonna brand it in high spirits, revealing the ball drake to send the ball drake to grab from the deck an Albaz monster, which will be our Quem. Quem is gonna send from the deck a branded card. We have the retribution to add back that branded card as we now have our branded fusion. Now the fantastical dragon is anti-link. Otherwise, if no link is special summoned, the Phantasmi does not special summon. And this is not a side deck event. We cannot side deck out the Phantasmi once we realize we're playing against a deck that has no links. So if you want to main deck a side deck card, it's just going to be so good that it has overall good general use. Unfortunately, the Branded Fusion does state the turn you activate this card, you can't link. So you can't link before or after the Branded Fusion. Thus, most decks are not going to be playing any links whatsoever. Maybe an Anaconda, maybe Little Knight. Very likely not playing a Little Knight, though. Let's keep on going. Game two, we are a turn two deck. We lost game one, and we're choosing to go second. We want to go second. Harvey Feather Duster is going to help with a lot of this disruption, getting rid of the Droplet, Brain in Red, the Beast is a Pop, the Loss will search for a disruption. There's about four disruption in the back row that we're going to be getting rid of with that Harpy Feather Duster. Now, after we wipe out the back row, what we're going to have to follow up with is a Mirror Jade non-target monster banish. And uh, I mean, a lot of the disruptions just simply in the back row. The Rinbrum could be sent to then reborn the Albaz. That's another disruption. The Fairytale Snow could flip a monster on the field face down. That's three disruptions. Now, with the Legendary Ocean, if we enter an open game state after resolving the Legendary Ocean, I think we win. Because that will immediately, on the summon of the Karyu Shin, force the opponent to get rid of all of their monsters but one. It's not something you could chain to. You have to immediately apply the effect. So let's see what happens. Let's first wipe up that back row, losing so much disruption off of just that. Shark Cannon, steal the Albaz. Or I should say by banishing it. And Shark Cannon, again, banish the Fairytale Snow. <laughs> we now just have the Mirror Jade non-target monster banish. Wow. We're going to be searching for a Widow Anchor. I guess Widow Anchor will negate the Mirror Jade, and then we're going to be done with that. We're going to engage, search our deck for a second copy of Widow Anchor. And how the Sky Striker cards work, they're all activatable more than once per turn, as long as you have nothing in the main monster zone. So we're going to send a Sprin, which will summon an Albaz during the end phase, if we're even able to do so. Probably not. We're going to non-target monster banish ourselves. Quem is, uh, yep, Quem's going to trigger. Reborn from the graveyard, our Albion. And what I say, open game state, summon this, immediately apply the effect. Goodbye to everything but one card in the field. Boom. We have Lubellion. And forever, as long as it's face up, you can only control one non-water. Albion grabbing the High Spirits. Sprint is going to add, not summon the Albaz because we can't. We cannot attempt to summon another monster. That's it. We're going to flip up that Sea Stealth attack as we now attempt to go to battle, as we successfully do so to open up our field to summon another monster. Can Albaz attempt to summon another monster? No, it, unless it would be a water. So if you, even though you're replacing the Albaz for a new monster, it would be an illegal activation if there was something that's even fusible into. We're going to simply end our turn as the Albion grabs a Branded in white. That's going to be a really good card to fuse with the Graveyard, fusing to get our Mirror Jade on the field. Upstart Goblin into another Upstart. What is this? Into a Mind Control. Karyushin every single turn also searching for more cards to help boost up our field. The Karyushin now cannot be targeted by a non-water. Well, 
The brightest blazing branded king is not only not a monster, it doesn't even target. It can negate the entire field of cards, everything except your own fusion. So if we could set that up, we'll be in a great spot. We are going to bring it opening, discard the tragedy, grab from the deck our Alubur as the Albion draws a card into the Book of Eclipse. We're going to temporarily banish our Karyushin until the end phase, but the Floodgate's now gone. That was the out to the Floodgate. So YY is going to have to go all in from here. Can we inflict lethal damage through simply just one Widow Anchor Negate and take control? Let's speed this up. Discard, Fuse, Mirror Jade, 7,000 damage. We are going to be grabbing back from the Grave, a Branded Fusion. Tragedy, Banish to grab back from the Graveyard, a Branded Loss. Flip it up, can't respond to the Fusion Summons now as we now make an Albion. We're in a state where you cannot use the Widow Anchor as we're going to then Fusion Summon again. Again, we can't use the Widow Anchor. So in response to our own Fusion Summon, we could pop cards in the field, like taking out the Widow Anchor, right? You'd want to take control and then block an attack and negate. We can't. It's not possible because of that Branded Lost. So that is now going to resolve as we reborn the Quen through the effect of the Golden Sword Soul being banished. And just like that, over 11,000 damage thanks to Book of Eclipse. Book of Eclipse for game, which is uh, recently released in Duel Links. Duel Links also has Droplet. Good, uh, you know, Trap Plays, I'm very proud of you for doing well, getting top eight with Umi Control and a really interesting way to play it. A blind second Umi Control deck with Sky Striker. It, it, did that exist outside of you? I don't know. Yuzhan Deploy. Now, let's talk about this field and is there any way to break this? You have non-target monster banish. We have a way to trigger uh, the branded loss through a fusion. The fusion itself will be a disruption. The branded loss will give us a Mercurial for a monster negate. We could negate an effect to special summon. We could Quem reborn an Albast in the graveyard to fuse with. We could uh, Ash Blossom negate, that is six disruptions. We then have the Chaos Nephthys, which could reborn from the graveyard after a destruction happens, which we could trigger ourselves. So then banish a card in the field and two cards in the grave. Is that about seven disruption? Did I miss out on anything else? I think that's about it. Seven disruption. And uh, let's go. It's actually eight if we can get Rinbrum to reborn the Albaz and Quem to reborn the Mirror Jade. So seven to eight. We grab that Spirit Gate. So let's talk about seven. There's the Rinbrum. And we're not sure if the Quem will be Quemming the Mirror Jade back in the field. We could actually pop it with the Borlin to then reborn it, possibly. We're going to call for the Grave Finger that Ash. We're now down to five to six disruptions. You will not be stopping me from searching my deck or destroying a Ubel. We're going to destroy the Ubel to summon a Ubel, and then we can make a Phantom of Ubel. We're gonna return back to D Lotus and the Spirit of Ubel to summon our K, our Phantom of Ubel to then make a Little Knight. Little Knight on summon, going to banish a card on the field or in either grave. We're gonna be going for that branded in red as we add back the Alubur, as we chain the Little Knight to banish itself plus the Quem. And the Quem was the super conditional of reborning the Mirror Jade, so I wasn't really countering that, counting that at the moment. As we now, with the Alubur, fuse with our hand and field going into a Guardian Chimera. Now, it does not have the protection of the Branded Lost because it was summoned on Chainlink 2. We're gonna be popping a card and draw two and searching for a Mercurier. Sure, sure, sure. Grab the Mercurier, which we are counting as our disruption. Get popping. We did just draw into a Maxi, didn't we? Yes, we did. That just happened. We're gonna be discarding the Reborn, chain the Maxi. Yes, we can. Now, what do we have from here? We have the Mirji, the Retribution, the Mercurier. We have the Rinbrum, Reborn, the Albas to fuse the opposing field. Let's drop that down. As we now Shavara Chain Pop the Beast, we're going to use Retribution to negate the Shavara Summon. I do not think so. We still have 
the Mercurier. And we actually even have the Chaos Nephthys if we could trigger that. So pretty much probably just one here at the moment. The Albaz itself actually is a double disruption just like a Soul of Rage is because it's going to go into another form of disruption. So I mean, yeah, this was like seven to eight disruption we actually ended up going through. A lot of it is really conditional, but we were able to pull it off. Now, within the end phase, we're going to be activating the Borland, the bore load that is. We're going to negate the negate. So not only are we popping, mate, that will trigger the Chaos Nephthys and Grave as we make room, popping our monster to summon itself from the graveyard. Come forth and summon. Oh my gosh, Chaos Nephthys summoning onto the field. We're going to target the Spirit Gates and two cards in the grave and chain link block with the Mercurier in case you, let's say you had an Apollo USA or a Phantom of Ebel to negate the Chaos Nephthys. So goodbye on field, goodbye from the grave. Wow. The only negate we missed out on that was conditional was the Quem reborning something like a Mirror Jade. So if we were to, let's say, pop the Mirror Jade with the Borland just to get into the Graveyard, that would have been a good way to then reborn it with the Quem to the non-target monster banish again. We're going to use the Branded Sword to add back something like our Mercurier for our monster negate. And you may be thinking this is overkill. Well, the Mercurier would negate the in-hand Spirit of you Bell, which would summon in the battle phase to stop the attacks. I don't think so. 9300 plus a negate for the Spirit of you Bell. Lethal damage. Nicely done. Has anyone thought they had game? Then they summon Spirit of you Bell, and then the you Bell player wins the whole damn duel. It happens. It freaking happens. You just can't forget that they uh, could always have that possibly in their hand. S skills and MD. Maybe that should be a Master Duel exclusive. I mean, that'd be too crazy for them to balance. They're never going to do that. You bail trigger, chain the max C. While we have our Gamma to negate the Gamma, we also had Gamma to negate an Ash Blossom, but the Crossout Designator plays right through that Gamma negate, unfortunately. And, you know, we still have Gamma. So when do we whip out the Gamma? Do we negate a Yama? Do we negate a Spirit of Yubel when there's already a Nightmare Pain on the field? This may be a good Gamma, and that's exactly when we are whipping out that Gamma on the Yama. So the idea is we want to cut off access to the Escape of the Unchained, which would pop a card in the field. And the Yama also helps summon an Apollo USA and also into a Soul Rage. I mean, that Yama just cut off everything. We just lost a ton of disruption. A deck that regularly ends on eight plus disruptions now just has two. Technically just one in-engine disruption plus the non-engine in permanence. What are we doing with this? What do I say about Cartesia? Cartesia is gonna dodge the impermanence, but we could Phantom of You Bell to negate the Cartesia as the imperm negates the Alubur. Yes. Chain, Phantom of Ebel, negate so you don't dodge my imperm mates. And just like that, you're now negated from grabbing your branded fusion. We could fusion deploy into something. Or we got a Quen. We already used up our normal summon here. Let's see what else do we have as the spirit of Ubel is going to summon a Ubel from the deck. You do have to attack into it for double damage, by the way. The double damage is coming. 18, 18, 15, 15. Hello? <laughs> I'm out of here. It's double damage, mate. Ubel and the Nightmare Pain are two different damage. Wow. Begin. We have no hand traps, so we're going to speed this up as we fusion deploy, reveal Gangrenol, summon Cartesia. We have Fuse into a Disruption, which will also trigger the loss to grab a Mercurier. We have non-target Monster Banish. We have Maxi, which is not Disruption. We do have the Super Poly. We have Rinbrum, which could Reborn Albaz to Fuse with the field into another Disruption. So we have about six Disruptions plus Maxi. That should be everything. Let's go. I guess Super Poly is, uh, you know, it, it may not turn into another disruption. It may, yeah, just it'll probably just six, six. All right, we're gonna summon a Phantom of You Bell, which could negate a monster effect. And we are now going to Dark Backening Beast, additional summon the Chaos Summoning Beast, as we then use the Super Poly, which can't be using the Phantom of You Bell for a fusion material to fuse into a Garura. We're now down to five disruption. 
We have Branded Lost, which, think about this. Think about this. Think, thonk about this. Really, what is going on? Abomod is using and abusing and exploiting the power of Branded Lost on, in response to our own fusion summon. You can't finger nor Phantom of Ubel that max C because we used it in response to our own fusion summon. Guess what else we could do? We could, in response to our fusion summon, activate Mirror Jade to non-target monster banish that Phantom of Ubel, which will not be activatable. This window, Sniffus is completely turned off. That's exactly what Abomod's doing. Damn, <laughs> that was, that's wild. Holy moly, can't finger, can't Phantom of Ubel, and now we have a resolved max C when we had the finger to finger it. We're going to Throne, pop the Spirit of Ubel, summon a Ubel. As the Grand Granol now triggers, we have our Mercoria for a monster negate, Quem send from the deck the Branded Sword, Spirit Gates, discard D Lotus, reborn the Spirit of Ubel, trigger the Spirit to search for nothing as the Mercoria negates but does not destroy. We're gonna finger that Mercoria mate. I do not think so, as we have no way to get rid of the Mercoria out of the graveyard to dodge that disruption. If we had a Fairy Tale Snow, we could have done so, which we did see earlier within the previous duels. We do, in fact, get that Nightmare Pain. So we're now going to be using the Rinbrum to reborn the Albaz to fuse with the opposing field. Ubel plus Albaz making a Lubelian. Now, what happens here? The Nightmare Throne is supposed to trigger, right? You can't because it's in response to a fusion summon. So the Branded Loss turned off the Finger, turned off the Phantom of Ubel, turned off the Nightmare Throne, which is not activatable right now as we then summon a Borlode Furious Dragon. We're now going to Branded in red in response to our fusion summon, so you still can't respond to this, to now make a Guardian Chimera. Guardian Chimera, Chain Link 1, we're going to get poppin', we can't respond to that. Now we're gonna summon our Phantom of Yubel for the Shokaning into a Yama. Oh my gosh, are we desperate. <laughs> we have the Borlode Furious ready to get poppin'. We have the pop, and what else do we have there? I, I think that's pretty much it. We don't have anything like the Chaos Naphthys to trigger. We could draw into it. We are now popping. Get rid of that Nightmare Throne. I do not think so. That ain't happening today. You are not going to be summoning a monster from the deck like a Spirit of Ubel off of Pop and the Phantom of Ubel. We now have the Soul of Anguish. With the Unchained Soul of Shavar to set up the escape, we can now make an Axis Code Talker. Let's access the codes. No, never mind. That's a soul of rage. I uh, yeah. I mean, uh, do we have X? We we do have X good talker, but what's it really gonna do? <laughs> they have like ten cards in their hand. <laughs> we just have a soul of rage, which is only activatable in the main phase, which we didn't even care to pop it within the draw phase, which the Yama would have just then reborn it, or we would chain the escape to it, as we use the escape to take out the branded lost. Fine. So what we could have done is escape. A lot of people don't know this. Escape does not work like I believe it's the Fire King quick play that will pop the card even if the Fire King leaves the field. The Unchained still has to be there. This works like an SP Little Knight. So if we cared, which Abamod does not have to care here, we could have popped the Soul of Rage and then the escape would resolve with no effect. It would not pop a card in the field. It has to pop both. We're now going to Lord of Yama, so it, another comparison could be Promethean Princess. One of the monsters could leave the field, Promethean will, stop, will still pop one, even if there isn't another to pop. We have Soul of Rage, Reborning, we're gonna link off, and then we're going to use our Borlode Furious to pop the Soul of Rage, as you now link into nothing. A valiant effort from Sniffus, and good on you for not surrendering, my friend. Take that full damage. You got Max Seed, right? You know, uh, Max Seed happened. And <laughs> it's, it's so unfair. You had a finger for the Max Seed, you had a Phantom of Ubel for the Max Seed, but Branded Loss countered your counters to the Max Seed. We are purely with the Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom onto a Lily. Does not want Mobile X to have access to the My Friend Purely. The big risk is what if they already have another My Friend Purely in the hand? A card that they play three of. Triple Tactics Talent could draw into it unless we want to look at that hand. We have the E Purely Nor, which is not so good on its own. So draw two definitely makes sense here. 
and we still don't have that my friend purely, but we're going to directly chain to the pretty memory. By directly chaining, we're now going to use the effect of the Nor to set up the purely leap. All right, and now we can make our big X purely Nor. The X purely Nor will be affected by card effects though. So because of that, we, we didn't want to draw an additional card. That's interesting. We're going to imperm negate the Dark Beckoning Beast. And if you don't have a Spirit Gates in the hand, then that is a great play to be negating. You lose the effect of the additional summon. They can't reborn with the Spirit Gates. We're now going to get Purely Leapin and Chain the Max C. So we lose out on an additional draw because we didn't do it within the standby phase. But because the x is not going to be unaffected from activated effects, we wanted to be conservative with the effects. We just wanted to wait. Now, x Purely Nor, Detach 2, spin the Gruesome Grave Scormer back on the deck. Why? Well, if we get into the Graveyard, we could then banish it to Reborn or summon from the hand a Spirit of Ubel or a D-Lotus. We're making that Phantom of Ubel. We now have the Nightmare Pain. We're going to negate the Phantom of Ubel while the Nibiru is on its fourth summon counter. We're going to negate the Effect Veiler. X Purely Nor uh, is, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, we're going to uh, stop the Nightmare Pain. And uh, just like that, we are surrendering. The power of Max C. There you go. Knight, Mayor, Throne. We have Veiler and Nibiru. We were willing to imperm the Dark Beckoning, but not Veiler it. We do have a finger for the Veiler. And I guess we want to hold the Veiler for the Phantom of Ubel so that we could use Nibiru. Not knowing that they have a finger ready to get fingering. So let's speed this up until the moment arises to where we have five summons on that Nibiru. We are adding the Terran Cardinate, come forth and summon onto the field. And just like that, five summons have happened. And now we have a Phantom of Ubel. We are going to cross Sheep. So what's really dirty about the Phantom of Ubel is you can't Nibiru, they chain Phantom, then you chain Imperm or Veiler because it jumps off the field. So we have to awkwardly, preemptively negate it, then on resolution after negating, then hit them with the Nibiru. But we all know where this is leading to. Fingered onto the Veiler. And Basala should be really sussed out by this. Why? Were you trying to resolve a Veiler on my Phantom of Ubel? You have to have Nibiru, right? I don't even have to guess, now I know. You have Nibiru, thank you very much. Let's now speed on through this as we're pretty much screwed. Nibiru is a hard once returned, can't activate it again. We got the Yama, search our deck or graveyard for our Shavara. Squirmer, special summon, pop Ubel. Ubel trigger, summon a Terra Incarnate from the deck, making the super thick Apollo USA at Four monster negates, pop the spirit, summon a Ubel. We're going to link this up into Soul of Rage. Shavara set up the escape, turn back for another Phantom of Ubel. And what do we have here? We have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine disruptions plus a maxi and a call by the grave. Yeah. Just uh, say yes to everything. Negate. Chain Maxi to the My Friend Purely, which is not activating the special summon. Sure. Just set it up right now. If they had a Gamma, we would negate the Gamma very easily. We're going to use the Escape, pop in the Soul of Rage and the My Friend Purely. It's going to be protected by the Happy Memory. So it does not get destroyed. The effect, in fact, does resolve as we summon a Lily, which is untargetable. So we can't Soul of Rage target it to link off, but we still have the non-target Phantom, the non-target Apollo, Multiple negates, whether you are targetable or not, negate. And that is a hard once per turn of attempting to exceed someone with a graveyard. Now, the regular purely, it's not a hard once per turn. Uh, multiple purelys, multiple searches, multiple attempts to perform our exceed summon. So the top three was negated. We could negate that again. So we negated your search, negate your attempt to exceed someone. I think I incorrectly said you were attempting to exceed someone earlier, which you were not. You're just trying to search. And now you try to exceed the hand, Apollo just keeps on negating. The biggest counter to Apollo is by battle. Well, through Nightmare Pain, you get to protect yourself from your downside. As we now have a Fucho, Fucho wants to summon a Zeus. That's the main goal of the Fucho. Swing in and exceeds monster battled. We now have our Zeus. Zeus is here, but first we're gonna make a downer. And then with the downer, now we have the Zeus. We have two activations of the Zeus. 
So when we Zeus wipe the field, you Phantom of Ubel negate, I change the negate to wipe the field a second time and it goes through. Yeah, Zeus will wipe this field. That is what I'm looking at. Well, not if I for... Okay, so I activate, you chain the Zeus, I then negate. Yeah, we're gonna wipe the field. We're gonna wipe, we're gonna wipe, we're wiping. Yep, we wipe, we negate, we wipe again, and there's nothing we can do about it. Yep, but uh, do we really even care? We have a follow-up spirit gates, can make another phantom of Yubel. We're gonna chain banish the Zeus as we also finger the Engrave Lily to extend until the next turn of your Lily being negated. Is Lily semi-limited? I forget, yeah, it's Lily semi What the heck? Wipe the field! Holy moly! Yep, and let's get to it. Pop in a Spirit of Yubel to summon a Yubel onto the field. Open field, can Basala perform lethal damage on an open field? We have already used up our normal summon. We're going to Spirit Gates, Discard, Reborn, Spirit of Yubel, Spirit of Yubel, grabbing the Nightmare Pain. We're going to Spirit Gates, add back another Spirit Gates in the Grave to our hand, Nightmare Pain, pop the Yubel, summon a Terra Incarnate as we grab a D-Lotus. We're going to be triggering Yama to Reborn from the Graveyard, our Soul of Rage, as we have the Terra Incarnate for the Shokan into a Yama. Yama, search the Graveyard, add to our hand a Shavara, set a card, pop the set, summon Shavara. Not enough for lethal as we have a Muckraker now. Return from the graveyard to summon a Phantom of Yubel to then discard the D-Lotus to reborn from the grave the Shivara, as we have 4,800 damage, but we activated the Little Knight so we cannot attack directly anyway. All right, as we now make a Typhon. Typhon is here. We are top tier. We're going to spin a card on the field, a monster back to the hand as the Imperm negates. I don't think so, mate. Now what? Is this it for Mobile X? I think so. Soul of Rage is going to be linking off of the Typhon, going into our Unicorn. Unicorn on summon, discard a card, spin that back row card back into the deck we go. And we also are co-linked, so we get to draw an additional card in addition to spinning that card back. We are going to co... Okay, yup, let's go, let's go, let's keep on going. What was the applied effect in the draw phase? Draw phase applied effect we drew? What? What is that? During your draw phase, draw a card for each card. Uh, what? I, I know Unicorn does that. That extra effect. Huh? While any Colink Nightmare monsters on the field for your normal draw in your draw phase, you could draw one card for each different card name among those Colink Nightmare monsters instead of drawing just one card. But then we drew just one card. Okay. <laughs> All right. Get ready for game three. You're not going to miss a thing. BRP, let's go. Lily, come to me, my friend. Purely, we have no disruption whatsoever. Let's speed this up. As we are now going to be equipping a third, another one. So how many draws do we have? We have draw one, two, three, four, and the Nightingale is going to detach a material to make it so you cannot be destroyed by battle card effects, but more important, you take no battle damage. Now, the Nightmare Pain is an effect that reflects battle damage. So, it's damage from an effect, meaning it's effect damage. Yes, but no. It's an effect to reflect battle damage, so the damage is battle damage, but it's coming from an effect, but it's still not effect damage, so the Nightingale will protect you from the battle damage that's being reflected through the effect to reflect the damage, which is battle damage, not an effect, not effect damage. Okay, draw Maxi, draw my friend, detach, can't reflect. We're going to purely leap into draw three and draw four. Let's get to it. Draw again. Draw again. We got Valor and Maxi off of that. We have three spins of the Nor and a Valor. Dark Beckoning Beast into the opening of the Spirit Gates. Let's Nightmare Pain it up. Dark Beckoning, additional summon into the Chaos Summoning. Al Mirage. Let's get Al Mirage in. We're going to return from the graveyard in our hand to come forth and summon our Phantom of Bell. This is why we use the Nightingale early, so that the Phantom of Bell would not be summoned before we could activate. So this is a good way for protection. Summon this on your first turn. 
We're going to X purely nor we are going to get negated on that effect, but we'll just activate again, spin that nightmare pain back. We're now down to just one effect veiler and one spin. The newly summoned X purely nor cannot be targeted by card effects because it was just summoned and that is protection through the purely street. We're going to chain maxi in response to the spirit of Ubel. And I mean, you know, we're in the situation where at 2800 defense, that's three U bells for game, but the Nightingale turned off our opportunity to take the maxi challenge to go for game. So what do we do? We, we can't really do much. We I think we have to pretty much pass, but if we pass, we're going to lose. This is an absolute nightmare scenario. Nightingale plus maxi is GG, and we didn't even have maxi in our hand. We drew it off of drawing four. Well, we're going to keep on cooking. Uh, yeah, I don't, this is impossible to win. Basala, I'm so sorry. You just got purely. <laughs> Maybe we, we could deck them out. I think that's our only option to win this duel is to special summon 20 more times. Summon our Ubel. I don't think we could do it, though. Summon Ubel, pop Ubel, <laughs> add back the Spirit of Ubel, return back, summon our Phantom of Ubel, Nightmare Pain. We already activated the effect. Yup. Yeah, can't reflect the damage, as I said. You know, there you go. Thank you for showcasing that. That does not work. And there you go. 2-1 victory, purely advancing to the top four. My friend, purely it up. We got Lily into the imperm before they set up the field spell, making the newly special summon purely's untargetable. So, semi-limited Lily. We can't summon another Lily from the deck to then activate the effect to exceed the graveyard with. We're gonna have to summon the regular purely, which is also semi-limited. I can't believe both purelys are semi'd. There's now Princess Sprite. Princess Sprite is pretty desperate. Mill the top card of the deck. If it's a spell or trap, add it to the hand. If it's a monster, then GG. We're going to be banishing that Veiler with the Magna Hut. Trigger the Magna Hut to search for a dragon during the end phase for the show conning into a little knight, which I don't have to tell you is not a good turn one purely play. That is absolutely horrid. Imperm onto the Little Knight, so we just have Jura Swarm to banish an opposing Mascarina. We do have our own graveyard to summon our Jura Swarm to help block an attack. Let's speed this up. Poplar add as we activate to grab an original Sinful. Ash and Poplar summon the Oak. Oak reborn the Ash, trigger the Poplar to equip an Arvata into the back row. Send Arvata plus the Oak to summon the Flame Burge as we then make a Nightmare Phoenix. Phoenix on summon, we're going to discard a card, pop my friend purely, trigger the flamebers, reborn two level one fires. For the show con into a link three, Promethean, reborn from the graveyard, our flamebers. We're then going to further make an Amblo Whale, use the flamebers to put the Arvata into the back row, not the little knight, as we then drew a swarm, banish the Princess Sprite to block the other attack. Now, why is our bots in the back row? To summon it onto the field through the effect of the Flame Burst to have that monster negate in addition to our Veiler, in addition to our Promethean Princess. And where's our Garunix? We never had access to our Sacred Garunix. It's about triple three to four disruption. The fourth super conditional disruption is if a Link 3 or lower gets destroyed, so we just lost out on that. We then drew a Swarm, go into Typhon. Typhon, the main counter to Typhon is going to be Promethean. I think that's the most common way to just wipe it out and it pretty much does nothing. You turn off your ability to summon for the rest of the turn and you just triggered a Promethean. Pop in Flame Burst to Reborn the Oak and the Ash. We do have a Triple Tactics talent play after this madness. Grab an Eponix, Reborn the Poplar, Triple Tactics talent. We're gonna be drawing two and a Triple Purely Leap. Some people play just one leap for I guess this reason of it being Bricks. Now, Abo Bod. Let's finish up this duel. The Pretty Memory is going to gain 1,000 life, but that's not enough to prevent lethal, as we'll also summon a body to block just a single attack. We have zero disruption. There's nothing. So, Abo, Bod, clean up this duel, finish it. Zelantis, to battle we go. We're going to get non-target poppin', two cards in the field. Whatever you summon, we could pop it and open field, lethal damage. Let's hop into game number two. Pure Lee, come to me off the top of the deck. We got the my friend Pure Lee, my friend it up, reveal another three. Nibiru against Pure Lee not only likely will not be summoned, if it is summoned, 
purely doesn't care because you're going to grab up to three different quick play spells in the graveyard back to the hand and summon a purely from the deck or graveyard back onto the field. It's like a plus four if you get Nibiru. So uh, sure, be my guest. Which, again, as I said, likely not going to even be able to activate the Nibiru. And with the E purely nor, we're now drawing not one, not two, not three, but four cards in the standby phase. This is why the Sleepy Memory, I forget which format is limited to one. I think it's limited to one in both TCG and OCG for this very reason. Let's toss in a max C into the mix. Why not? Because draw four is not good enough. You also have to play under max C. Well, Poplar, come to me, original sinful. We could spin two times. We don't spin at all. The X purely Nor is completely unaffected from all activated card effects. Is there a goddess in the extra deck? The, not the, this goddess, the other goddess. No, we don't have the other goddess, which would be one of the main ways to out it. Otherwise, you could destroy it by battle. That is something. The Sacred Garunix is a good way to get a boost and attack over the X purely Nor. We just top decked a Veiler, so we went from two disruption to three. Negate the Oak. Sure. How much do we want to commit to this maxi? Well, we're done. <laughs> that, that's the extension. That, that, that's it. That's as much as we are going into maxi. We're even going to make a Link Rebo. What? We're, we're further cooking. We can't even attempt to banish the Expelli Nor. It does nothing. Banish the Mod Friend purely, purely street, equipping from the deck, giving us another spin. So we are going to spin the Little Knight, and you may be thinking, why isn't Little Knight chaining to the x Nor, right? It's now affected. Well, the x Nor was summoned this turn, so the field spell is protecting it from being targeted. Thus, there's nothing else to target with the Little Knight besides itself, and it is then an illegal activation. The x Nor deals with itself during our own end phase if we don't just win this turn, or we turn it into a Zeus. That's the most common thing we turn it into before it gets spun back. We're going to spin from their graveyard back to the deck, the follow-up play of the original Sinful so they don't get to search for a level one fire. We have regular Purely, come to me, pretty memory, as we use the Delicious to get nice and plump. Two counters, two, two. Baylor is going to be chain link blocking the plump as we now triple tactics talent. Look at the hand, get that Nibiru out of here. What were you trying to do against me, mate? I don't think so. Let's suck up the Sleepy, so we're going to again have a ton of draws during the standby phase if we even make it there. Lily is equipping from the graveyard into a beauty. We got 3,300 damage on the field, now 44. Let's add another 2,500, 69, as the x Nord now turns it into 81, which is not lethal damage because we gave them life points through our pretty memory. Well, let's add back a Druistorm. Let's equip another Sleepy. So after drawing four cards, Let's draw five, six, seven, three more, three more. Keep on drawing through just sleepy memory within this duel. We've drawn seven cards. Ponyx into the beauty negate. You could dodge this with a Kirin. Of course, we don't have it because we're not that lucky, but the Fire King Island is pretty good. If it th there weren't uh, uh, yeah, the Nor would spin it back. So we're just going to kill ourselves. That's the correct thing to do here. Let's hop into game three. And think about this, if you have a Super Poly, which we saw blow out another Snake Eye Fire King player. They had an Amblo Whale in Arvata, they got Super poly it turned off every single disruption. Well, you can't Super Poly with a Water, Wind, and a Fire here, so this is the anti-Super Poly play. And we have the Imperm, Ash, Double Negates, and a bunch of cards in the graveyard. It's a lot. It is a lot. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven disruptions is what I'm counting. Seven. Ash, negate. Now down to six. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Yep, six. Just double checking in my head. So, oh, we just drew no Vela, so now we have seven again. Apollo negate. Now down to six. And, you know, basic math. If we have more disruptions than they have cards in the hand on field, we just keep on negating, right? Negate again, we're now down to five. Five more disruptions. <laughs> Let's get to it, we're gonna link this up. 
Now, Promethean cannot be used on a special summon monster because it can't be targeted by the purely street, but only if it's a purely, and that's definitely not a purely. That's gonna trigger the Promethean. Pop the Animon that tried to suck up my Zulantis, how dare you? And then we're gonna trigger, oh, it was, I was wrong. We have, actually have eight disruptions, eight. We even have more, because the Amblo Whale. I forgot about that whale, 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 whale. So let's go back up to five. We are going to pop from, yeah, just correct thing to do. Get out of here, get out, get out while you can. And you know, it's important to note that a well-timed Super Poly could just turn all of that off. And while Super Poly is not widely used, you probably, if you can handle it, if you can, do make sure to play around it. All right, good job, two, one. Game number one of the top four, Hajime. Pretty memory within the draw phase to play around the Veiler. Can't Veil. I wish I could Veil. Veil on the Lily is pretty good here, but we made sure to draw phase that Lily. We are now going to be able to Veil if we wanted to, but I'm thinking we're thinking that because I couldn't Veil the first effect, it's going to feel too wasteful and maybe look bad that I then Veil the second effect. Do we agree with that? My friend Purely, reveal to me three cards that we want, gaining the trap of the three. So we have a monster negates, a spin, and a veiler negate. We have triple disruption plus a max C. Okay. Fire King Sanctuary, set that up, pop in the ash to grab the Garunix, which will trigger and is not negatable by the beauty. We could negate the Garunix on field though with the beauty, which is exactly what we're doing. Negate. Now we could triple tactics talents to either take or draw two or look at the hand. We're gonna take control, so we just lost our spin. We do have the Veiler. We're now gonna send Sanctuary to suck up the Ma Friend purely. Thank you very much. Normal summon our Veiler into a Link Karibo. As we then make a Dark. Dark will steal a Dark Monster from the opposing player's graveyard. Give me your Lily as we then activate the Max C. Chain the cross out designate to negate that max C. Not tossing a Veiler on top of that. We're gonna wait with the Veil. We also got Pot of P to have our damage, banishing up the six cards from our extra deck to look at the top six of our deck. Zombie Vampire. I mean, this is just so funny to be summoning the zombie freaking vampire. I have to see. As we negate with the Gamma, negate that zombie vampire, mate. How many people are playing this in the deck of the Snake Eye Fire King. I can't imagine the majority, definitely not. Snake Eye, 15%. That's a lot more than I expected. So good job on you. You take control of a monster and it's now considered level eight to make your zombie vampire. That's wild. We're going to be chaining the maxi to the delicious memory, but you don't have to special summon. You choose on the resolution if you want to. And we are choosing to do so. Of course we are into the lily come to me my friend purely this is a situation where mobile x just wins through battle damage on this turn just like that we just made the dark indestructible my battle if we reveal three of my friend purely's we're going to attack four times into the dark i can't do the math here you're gonna have to help me out attack 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 every attack we're going to reduce the attack of the dark by half of its attack continually searching Holy moly, let's see what happens. I think we flame it on for this. This is a flame on if I've ever seen one. Are you ready? Oh my gosh. We have, do we already have the, my, the, the purely in the graveyard? Where's the happy? Did we just make this indestructible by battle and we don't have a happy for the multiple attacks for game? What the heck? Did I miss something? Suck up the Fire King Island? Cut the music. 9,000 life? So what? We had Purely Leap on top of it. We may, I, I would need a calculator, but I think we may be Miss Lethal. I need a calculator for that. Uh, someone look that up for me. 2K, 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 and then overlay into uh, what would be good? I don't know. I don't know, but maybe it wasn't. So we didn't have the boost from the delicious. Uh, 8K reduced by 1850, but then 925, then 412. Uh, 
Yeah, we, we probably were a, a little bit off. I'm not sure if Mobile X actually did the calculations himself, but still, searching for four cards is pretty good, even if you don't have lethal, right? Attack four times, search four times. Well, very well done. Mobile X taking a game one victory. What is this? We have our Vata pass. What the trash? You're not a tier one deck for that reason. We have purely activate. We ain't our Vata negating. Now, Karen, do you think this is a form of disruption? It is not. If we destroy Karen, it does nothing. Sadly, unless the Maxi draws into a Fire King, which it now will not be doing. Or it will because the Arvata is negating. So, we are going to be special summoning. We're going to chain Kirin, pop the Arvata. So this actually is a disruption now. We actually don't have to draw into a Fire King, so correction. Kirin, pop Arvata. As the Arvata pops the Kirin, then the Kirin reborns the Arvata to pop a card in the field. I, I completely missed that. My bad on that. This is actually disruption. This is great. Negate and destroy... Did we just protect the Kirin from being destroyed with the happy memory? Yeah, we did. Wow. Happy memory protected Kirin from being destroyed by the Arvata, thus the Kirin does not reborn Arvata to then pop a card in the field. Mobile X, what the heck was that? That was pretty nice. That was good. Ash, negate the Lily from searching. Yeah, just protect your own cards. I remember back in the day when Minotium was a bit more prevalent, people were using the Happy Memory to help counter them popping their own balls. So that was also pretty good. We got the E, Purely, Nor. We do not want to continue to Special Summon under that max C. Let's chill. E, Purely, Nor, into draw one, into draw two, chain the max C, sure. As we now go into our X, Purely, Nor with a single spin, just one. So with one spin, we do get to draw an additional card here, unless we ash it. We're ashing draw one. You know, we have two ash, so sure, why not? One spin, one veil, and a Nibiru that's not gonna be summoned. So what do? To battle we go, take out that purely. Now back to Mobile X. Abobod, what is going on? It's all hand traps. Max, Max, Ash, 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 Veiler, <laughs> it's crazy. All hand traps plus an Arvata and Kirin. Too much hand traps. We're going to protect the Kirin from being destroyed by card effect again as the Veiler negates the Lily. Unfortunately, your ex Nor can't spin your own card from being negated. We are going to then, to battle we go. Within the battle phase, spin that Kirin back into the deck you go. As we now deal some damage to then make our Zeus before the Expelli Nor gets spun back into the extra deck. Let's go. We have a Field Wipe plus a Veiler. All non engine. What, what the heck? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven non engine? S seven out of nine? We're going to Lily. We can't finger the Lily in the Graveyard because there is none to negate that effect. Can't finger a spell, unfortunately. 5,100 damage. Can we turn this into lethal as we spin the Call by the Grave back to the hand? Get out of here. As we now summon another Purely. If this goes through, we should have game. Not that. That's not what I was talking about. Uh, don't we have the Princess Sprite for a game anyway? Do we have a Link one? Oh, we do have the Pretty Memory. We did have it. I didn't see the Pretty Memory. I thought we were adding the Street, and just like that, we did hit a quick play spell off the top of the deck to give us that lethal damage. Do we also, we do not play Princess Sprite? Wait, we didn't have lethal damage because of the pretty memory boosting up the opposing life points. We have Little Knight on summon, banishing the Arvata. Now back to you. We have Banish, Monster Negate, Wipe the Field, and Veiler Negate, Quadra Disruption, as we'll very simply negate the Diablo Star with the Beauty. So first we're gonna banish it, then negate it be the direct chain link to it. So banish it and negates. We still have Valor. We still have the Zeus. Very well done. Negate, no set from the deck. Normal summon Ash. Actually a good play if you had a Garunix in the graveyard and it was not lethal damage. Is that a 2-0? Yes, it is. Purely advancing to the grand finale. Damn. Begin with the Trap Tricks field. Sure.
What do we have here? We have non-target monster banish. We do not have an Albaz in the graveyard, so Rinbrum Reborn is not going to be a play. We are going to, with the Chaos Nephthys, maybe summon it and then get Banishing. We also have the Brand of Banishing, which could fuse the field and then fuse into a Disruption and then search our deck for a Mercourier. And we have an Ash Blossom, so about six Disruptions here. Good luck. Grass looking green, mill three. <laughs> what? Grass looking brown. We're at, that was actually pretty good. Getting an Albaz in the graveyard to then use the Branded in white. We have Lubellion discarding the Retribution, fusing with the Banished Albaz to then make our Mirror Jade. To battle we go on the attack, non-target monster banish, which will be met with our own non-target monster banish. You try to banish me, I banish you. Goodbye to your Mirror Jade. And goodbye to the, uh, wait, you banished ourself? Whoa, whoa, what? We didn't banish that there, Mirror Jade. We left it up. We banished and then they banished themselves. Okay. 3K to the face. As we follow up a Cartesia main phase two to go into the branded banishment to fuse with your field. We leave up that Mirror Jade so we can fuse with it. Sure. Reborn the Albion, and that's why we left up the Mirror Jade banishing ourselves to make a Grand Grenoble. Grand Grenoble on summon. We're going to trigger the Lost Search for Mercurial for a monster in the gate, and Grand Grenoble send from the deck or action next to the grave. It's too much to contest, thus we hop into game number two. 60 versus 60, we have a dead grass. That's no good. Grass is only good going second in the mirror match here. What are our disruptions? Do we even have any? Uh, I don't I don't really see it. I guess if you monster leaves the extra deck, the Quem could reborn the Albaz to fuse the opposing field. So one disruption, if you destroy something, the Chaos Nephthys could then come forth and summon, but not by battle. We have a light and dark on the graveyard even. Uh, Quem's gone. We do have a light in the graveyard, so we do have the Nephthys if you destroy a card by card effects. Super conditional, likely not going to happen. We're going to Serenir, send from the deck here, send the Branded Fusion to get Fusion Summoning into our Mirror Jade. With the Mirror Jade, we're triggering the Branded Loss to grab a Mercoria for our Monster Negate, non-target Monster Banish, goodbye to the Coritus. Coritus triggering to summon from the deck, nothing as the Mercoria negates. It could have tried to summon an Albaz. So if we were to make it leave by card effect and only by card effect, it would actually turn into a disruption. We don't have the thrust, thrusting a duplication into the back row to duplicate the effect of the Branded Fusion. We are now going to be setting up a Branded Banishment during the end phase. Now, think about this. Duplication says target a fusion in either player's graveyard to banish and copy that spell. So, there's a Branded Fusion in the opposing player's graveyard. We could banish it to copy it. What the hell? That's going to happen. When do we want to do it, though? We're going to grab a Branded in White. Branded in White. We're going to call up at the Grave Finger the Ingrave Albaz, which also negates our own Albaz, which we're probably not going to be activating anyway. We don't have a card in our hand to discard, but the Lost would have searched for a card to be able to discard as we fuse this up into a Guardian Chimera. Guardian Chimera is going to pop two, draw one, as the duplication copies the Branded Fusion in the opposing player's graveyard, banishing it from the game. Now, Kit could grab it back, so it's not completely gone. We have the Albion on summon as the Chimera gets popping. By taking out the Albion before it activates, it doesn't activate. Triggering the Chaos Nephthys, reborn from the graveyard. And with that Reborn, we're gonna activate to banish the Mirror Jade and two cards from the grave. Grab the kit, thank you very much. Come forth, Chaos Nephthys, banishing the Lost and two opposing Albazes from the graveyard. To battle we go, big enough to wipe you out by battle. And the Mirror Jade, was it not Fusion Summon? Is that why it did not activate? How was that Mirror Jade summoned? We have the Magna Hut activating to search for a dragon during the end phase as the Anaconda sends a fusion, fusion deployment since the brand of fusion is not in the deck anymore. 
as we grab a Cartesia during the end phase and the Brandon High Spirits adds back during the end phase as we add another Albaz from the deck to the hand as we set up the Brightest Blazing. Brightest Blazing will be able to negate everything on the field except the one fusion we select that has to mention Fallen of Albaz, which is not a Guardian Chimera. Branded Fusion, come forth and summon into Lubellion. We are currently in game three because game one was a disconnect. And that's just like spilling your juice all over your game mat and cards. We unfortunately have to give a game one loss to Abamod due to unexpectedly game freezing within game one. So let's give the game one win to Y and we are in game number three currently which uh, looks like this at the moment. Boom. So let's read the Brightest Blazing. Choose a fusion you control that mentions Fallen of Albaz, negate everything else except that fusion. The Guardian Chimera does not mention the Albaz, so that is a big problem here. But we could Cartesia fuse with the Albaz to then summon a card that mentions the Albaz to then negate everything but that card. We now got our Albion. Come forth, Mirror Jade. Now, Let's activate the Albion, chain the Mirror Jade. Do we brighting, brightest blazing? Yes, we do. Negate everything but the Albion. So choose it, negate everything else. Everything's got a little cross out mark from it. As we then fuse our graveyard to summon our Lubellion, which is no longer, it's not part of the cards that were on the field on the activation of the trap that negates everything, including your own cards, except the fusion you choose. So we are now summoning a non-negated Mirror Jade of our own. To battle on the attack, non-target monster banish, we allow you to kill my Mirror Jade as we send a Titan Clad to the graveyard. Cartesia within the main phase two. We are now gonna be summoning a Grand Grenoble. Grand Grenoble is gonna send a Rinbrum from the extra deck to the grave as the Albion sets up a Branded in red. We now have the Cartesia triggering to add back to the hand here as the High Spirit adds back to the hand also. We have the Rinbrum to Reborn and Albaz to fuse the opposing player's field. So that's gonna be a double disruption. And we also have the Brain in red. And we have the Chaos Nephthys. So it's looking bad for Abamod, but Abamod does have about four disruptions here. As we activate the Rinbrum within the draw phase to play around a Triple Tactics talent. On summon, discard Cartesia. That's one disruption. Using into the board load. We got triple disrupt. Let's go. We got this. The Mercurier is going to be a problem. Thrust also, uh, not really. Thrusting to a talent would have been the problem. Well, if they were to activate a monster effect in the main phase, we're going to Foolish Burial, send for the deck and Albion Shrouded. And now we're popping. Now we're triggering the Nephthys. Reborn to banish, nothing. Because we just got freaking negated. We're going to on summon banish a card in the field and two cards from the grave. Mercurier completely screwing it up. Mercurier adding an Albion. We still have branded in red. So we're going to take control of a monster. Thank you for your Borderload Furious. It is activatable again. And we are now going to go into our final form of disruption, adding back the engrave Albaz to get Fusion. We are fusing into Titan Clad, which is not a form of disruption. We got nothing. Our disruption was going to be summoning into a Guardian Chimera. What happens if you summon Guardian Chimera in response to a Triple Tactics talent? Well, you take control of it and then you gain the effect. We have our own Chaos Nephthys. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're both playing each other. We got a Spider-Man duel here. Banish from the opposing player's field and graveyard. Now the Titan Clad is unaffected by the activate effects of any other special summon monster from the extra deck. And that Nephthys was from the grave. We're gonna Retribution send from the deck to the grave to the effect of the Albion Shrouded, adding back the Branded in white. Remember, this is the duel where our Branded Fusion got banished by a duplication from the opposing player using our Branded Fusion. We're now gonna Branded in white, banish from the grave, Mirror Jade and Albest to come forth and summon another Mirror Jade. Holy moly. Unstoppable. Wipe out by battle so it does not trigger to summon from the deck or extra deck, which we then have lethal damage 2,500 while you visually only saw YY win a single duel. Game one was unfortunately a disconnect. 
And even if Y does not want to receive a game one win, we have to force it upon him. We can't have players be picking and choosing, being a good guy and a bad guy on disconnects. We have to hard enforce a good policy that ensures that people are not disconnecting their Wi-Fi or airplane moding when they don't like their hand to essentially reset their hand. So thank you. Two to one. Let's go. Grand finale. Are you ready? Branded versus purely begin. We're going to start this off with a branded fusion, which gets ashed. We could have used grass looking greener instead to eat that ash, but no, we're going to use it for the follow up instead. Let's get follow up. And with the grass looking green, we're going to be milling a ton of cards here as we also chain the branded opening into a max freaking C. Ain't no way. So we will be drawing per special summon. We have to be very careful on the amount of summons we will be doing. We're not going to be summoning. We can just add it to our hand instead of summoning it. And we'll be looking at the full amount of contents that were milled right now, as you can see. Got Lubellion in the graveyard here. The Albion is activatable. The Chaos Nephthys is activated if a card gets destroyed. The Brightest Blazing could add back to the hand. We got an Albaz in the graveyard. Very nice. Serenir triggering to send a Retribution here. Normal Summon the Quem, send a Cartesia. Albion, send the Branded Wipe. Could add that back with the Retribution. But remember, we're under Max C. So how much special summoning are we willing to do? Brand White banishing the Albaz and Cartesia to simply go into the Albion Sanctifier Dragon. But that's it. Stop your disruption no more. Not setting the Book of Eclipse, that's quite interesting. Imperm onto cart the Quem, which now can't reborn the Albaz, which ha would have discarded the Book of Eclipse to then get uh, fusing with. So that is a good reason to keep the Book of Eclipse there and to negate the Quem. We now, with the Albion, we could still reborn the Albaz. We didn't need the Quem. We still have the Sanctifier to reborn Albaz to fuse. And the Purely Happiness is untargetable thanks to the Purely Street. But the Albaz is a non-target fusion effect, but it will trigger the My Friend Purely and the Field Spell to summon a Purely and add up to three different quick plays in the graveyard back to our hand. Let's get to it. Minus 500, reveal three of our Purely's randomly come to me. Our quick play spell to chain equip onto our E Purely Happiness. We could have chain like blocked if we wanted to, but I think it's best we activate the effect in the battle phase. It's worth noting the Sanctifier is completely untargetable. Otherwise, you would use the Pretty Memory to suck it up. And this is it. We are going to be reborning a Baldric and a uh, Max C. Interesting. Okay. Uh, no out. Wait. Did we? We we didn't even have Albaz in the grave. I thought we had an Albaz in here. There's no Albaz in here. And I thought the Sanctifier was untargetable. It did not get targeted. We get to non-target, reduce it by half of its attack. Holy moly. This is a problem. Alibur really wants to negate the E purely happiness, but can't because it's untargetable. So we're going to summon, can't negate. And then this is where the problem comes. We are going to be able to equip the Delicious Memory and make the Baldrake indestructible by card effect if we want to use that effect. I'm not sure if we're in lethal range anymore, if we would even want to do that. We're not, so we're just going to simply take it out. Searching up to four cards, by the way, with the E Purely Happiness. We're going to suck up the Happy Memory again, giving us an additional attack onto a monster only. Was summoning the Alibur a good idea? I don't think so. It, it just gave them a free card, because otherwise the Happiness cannot attack directly for that search. We got to swing in the bodies. We're now summoning a natural X purely nor purely reveal the delicious to go into a plump with that plump. We're going to suck up to two spell and trap cards from either player's graveyard, stealing the Brandon white, stealing the Brandon fusion. You now can't use retribution to add it back to the hand. We can't use duplication to also copy it. So we're going to be sucking up a sleepy memory and we could use that effect of sucking up spell and trap cards during every single turn is purely a hard counter to branded the, th this seems kind of sus i don't know what the heck's going on we have two naturally summoned x purely nors that's spin one two three four five six cards six spins and they're completely unaffected from activate effects the book of eclipse cannot flip them face down it's not gonna work 
the brightest blazing is going to add back. In addition to the spin six, we also have a banish with Little Knight. But wait, there is more. And the more is drawing one, two cards during the standby phase. Yep, just draw two. Not too much of a big deal. Just a pot of greed. And our turn, <laughs> equip again with the purely street. Can't clips. Clips are not going to work on them. We are going to just put everything to attack. 6,200. Please, for wise sake, just end the duel here. We're going to spin the Lubellion back just to get the pretty memory in the graveyard so we can make our beauty exceeds. To battle we go. 7,800 damage, mates. Lethal damage. Nicely done, Mobile X. Wow. All right. All right. Yeah, you know, we didn't have the Albaz to fuse with the happiness, so that definitely did turn into a problem. The happiness being untargetable from the Alubur, another problem. Game two, fusion deployment, double Veiler and Ash Blossom. Both Veilers are, of course, activatable here. We have an Albaz in the graveyard. We have a Fairytale Snow. That is a flip face down, non-target monster banish, a fuse, a pop, and let's go. Pure Lee, come to me off the top of the deck. Happy Memory is the best card going second. But if we non-target monster banish right now or wait, no, we're waiting. Okay, getting plump. There's a situation here. A lot of people forget the effect of the plump. If the plump directly activates in response to a quick play spell, it gets to non-target banish a monster on the field. We surely are not going to forget that, right? Shh, nope, we're, we're not letting that happen. Nope, you are not going to directly chain to your quick play to the non-target monster banish one of our monsters. We'll do it to you instead. Summon the Lily. This is the final play, <laughs> grabbing the My Friend Purely. We're going to brand it in red, grab the Tragedy to now Fusion Summon with our Hand and Field into Guardian Chimera. On Summon, pop the Lily, draw two, search our deck with the Tragedy, Chain Link block the Chimera from an Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom stops the pop. So it's very good to ensure that you when you summon the Guardian Chimera, it's either under the protection of the Branded Lost or you're chain link blocking it with another trigger. Grab back the Albaz during the end phase, and uh, I think we could speed this up. 8800, why? Thank you very much. We're going straight to the battle phase here as we now hop into game three. Oh my. Oh my. We are going to pretty memory come forth and summon the Lily. We have no hand traps whatsoever, but what could possibly be better than a hand trap is a board breaker like the Forbidden Droplet. The problem with the Droplet is, what if the monster you want to negate happens to be unaffected from activated effects while you have five or more materials? We just so happen to be playing against that deck. So let's speed this up and we'll see if we have an opportunity to whip out that Droplet. All right, directly chain, plump to the quick play spell. We're going to special summon a purely, which is semi-limited. Grab from the top of the deck a sleepy as we now make the assembled Nightingale to ensure that Branded will not be able to one turn kill us. Let's suck it up. Two more cards. We can now naturally summon just like that in next purely nor. Undroplitable. Now, Gia really wishes she had Droplet in Duel Links because Leerlusk happens to be the best deck in Duel Links and you need to use Droplet against it. Well, it's not going to be so good against the Expelli Nor. With seven materials, we're going to be able to draw one card in the standby phase. We could spin three times and we could spin once and still be unaffected from activated effects. Let's go. We also have a Veiler. So about four Disruption. Are we going to drop the Lit on the Nightingale? We're not going to even bother using it. Albaz will fuse with the Nightingale, or not if we spin the Albaz back into the deck you go. Thus, no fusion summon. And this is the problem. It's still unaffected even after spinning. Absolute madness. We're going to set a card, send the card to suck up the opposing card, use the call by the grave to finger your purely from the grave, as we then say, you ain't fingering nothing, mate. I'm going to return it back into the deck we go. This is uh, not looking so good for Branded. 
And the main way to out an X purely Nor is to wait until it goes back in the extra deck, but that's only if it's summoned through the trap, which it wasn't. So this X purely Nor is gonna stay right where it is. It ain't leaving. We're going to purely, which should have been fingered, but it dodged it to grab a straight purely street. We got the Nightingale ready to turn itself into a Zeus, as we also have a Link Karibo. Keeping our 4,600 defense in defense because we don't want to give the opponent the option to attack over the X Pilly Nor. In every turn, every end phase, we're giving it an Xyz material, making it bigger. And on every time on our own turn, we're also going to suck up a card in the field if there's a card to suck. So it's actually a strategy to do nothing because the X Pilly Nor is not going to get bigger through sucking up our own cards if we just do nothing. So <laughs> that's exactly what we did. Droplet doesn't work on it. It keeps on getting fatter and fatter. We are going to be summoning from the deck a Lily. Lily grab a Purely Leap. Target the Happy in the Graveyard to make an E Purely Happiness. Are we ready to inflict lethal damage here? Well, we're confident enough to put our super boosted X Purely Nor into attack position. Happiness search our deck. We do not gain an additional attack and we cannot equip the quick plays onto our X Purely Nor. End phase further boosting it up. 3,800 attack, draw three in the standby phase, and it could spin four cards. It could spin twice and still be unaffected from all card effects. So it's like, why is purely good? I don't know, does this look pretty good? We just drew three, we have a bunch of hand traps, we're unaffected from all activate effects. We have no out, the droplet's dead, Dark Ruler would do nothing. Seems pretty good when it gets going. Okay, Cartesia <laughs> negated. Brand White, how about I spin the card on your field to see if you even have a fusion play? You don't, so goodbye to Cartesia. <laughs> no play for you. Battle phase, Sarah Near, banishing the opposing purely here. As we take no damage thanks to the Nightingale, so we don't even care. Drop the lit, send two to negate two on the field. We cannot negate the unaffected from the negate X purely nor. Send a branded fusion, use the retribution to add it back, but the X purely nor could spin it back, but we're choosing to not do so. Are we toying with our opponent? Yes, we are because we have an Ash Blossom to negate. I don't think so, mate. We had multiple ways to stop this. Look at what purely is making branded look like. A bad deck, yeah? This looks like a whole nother level. Absolute insanity. We're going to be tributing on, okay, a mobile X, was that needed? Lethal damage with the happiness, it just like that, purely winning the entire event. <laughs> Let's go. That, uh, not really BM, that was okay, that was okay. All right, we cool, we cool, we cool. Meta weekly every single week. Top 16 breakdown, U Bell, Branded, Purely, Snake Eye, Fire King, and Tear Elements doing quite well. We randomly have Umi Control, Snake Eye, Tri Brigade, Fire King, Exorcister, and Dragon Link. So it's like technically Fire King was three of the top 16, but you know, it was just used a Tri Brigade. So I'm interested to see that deck list. And uh, even the Snake Eye engine did well, which uh, kind of lends towards the Snake Eye, Fire King. It's almost like four of the top 16 within the Snake Eye and Fire King engines, respectively. Let's look at the Snake Eye. RV Angelus, 40 cards clean. We got room for the Jet Synchron plays here. Let's look at the extra deck. Using the power of the Formula Synchron to help make cards like the Baron to Floor. We got Borload Savage Dragon up in here. Very nicely done. Good job to you. We then have Dragon Link. Curious, is there Centurion in this? 45 cards, Giorgio. We are not playing Centurion. 45 cards looking just like this. This is looking really standard. Good job. And then here is the extra deck. Nicely done. And then we have, what else we have here? Fire King Tri Brigade. Why are we playing this? Is this something you normally play? Uh, well, look at your profile, actually. Wow, you're just like all over the place, aren't you? You just play whatever the heck you want. Some stun, some non-stun. Wow, so this is your first time playing the Tri Brigade with your uh, your thing. I guess I gotta add that. Oh, I don't add as an engine because it is the deck type itself. So good on you. This is pretty cool. I wish I was able to see more plays. You are in fact playing the Revolts. That would have been nice to see. So maybe if you have some replays on your profile, I'd like to see you set up with this deck. Double Omen, we got the Dweller up in here. 
nicely done. And what else do we have? We have Exo Sister sneaking into the top 16. All right, whoa, what the heck is Overlay Network, huh? Overlay Network? Continuous spell. Target a face-up monster you control that has a level. Special summon one monster with the same level from your hand or graveyard in defense, but its effects are negated. You cannot special summon from the extra deck the turn you activate this effect except Xyz monsters. So you can't link before, then perform an Xyz. The target one Xyz you control, add one card attached to it to the hand. What? That's weird. Target and Xyz, add the attached to your hand? Huh? Okay. Uh, are other people using this? Time Thief is using this? You're the only Exo Sister to use this, uh, unless I were to go to TCG stats and see if that's a thing. Sue Ship's also using it. All right, uh, good to see. Very interesting, good job on that. Definitely spicy, main deck in the Secret Village. What the hail? And then here is the extra deck. Let's keep on going. Umi Control. Turn two deck. Oh my Jesus. So it's not a standard Umi control where it plays the jellyfish and some of the other nonsense. We got the 1C stealth attack. You got Sky Striker. I like maybe we should just call this its own deck. Under Umi control is okay. So good job. I do want to make sure I have the engines properly represented. It should show that you're playing engage. Yeah, I guess uh, this is enough. It shows that you are playing the Sky Striker there. Sure. Nicely done. I definitely want to try this out. This is something. Okay. Nice. Good job. And then there is the extra deck. Let's keep on going. We now have Tier Limit. 60 card Tier Limit May back. We got the Black Goat Last now being the newest addition to Tier Limit. Unfortunately, we are playing Horus instead of the Lightsworn cards. So were the Lightsworn cards a bust? Did Lightsworn flop in Master Duel? Did the last pack entirely flop uh, completely besides the Black Goat Laughs? It looks like that's the case. And I can promise you the next pack is much better. So sorry that this pack sucks. I don't consult with Konami on what's release. There is the extra deck. And then this, ooh, this is spicy. Labyrinth with Lightsworn. I am definitely inspired to want to play something like this. I've been wanting to play Labyrinth, but people are going to be upset if I'm playing pure Labyrinth. So if I could mix them with the mermaids and that could be my excuse to play this deck. Triple Black Goat Laughs. Oh my gosh, I think I have to craft a second and third. This is going to be expensive. Uh, triple Transaction, I do like that a lot. So yes, Julio, thank you for showing me the way. And then here is the extra deck. Uh-huh. What else do we have here? So let's scroll this up. We then have Snake Eye Fire King. Anything uh, out of the ordinary here? Yami, nothing too crazy in the extra deck that I see. How about the extra deck? Uh, main deck, extra deck. Okay, what about the main deck of the second deck? Diavolo, anything too crazy? Looking quite standard. There is the, the zombie vampire or something. It's both of you playing zombie vampire, which is outside the norm. We then have Brandon, second place Weiss, 60 car. We love in the Chaos Neph this year. We got the Fairy Tale Snow also, sure. The, one of the biggest standout cards at Worlds was the Brightest Blazing. It put in a lot of work. So I'm uh, seeing a lot of you newly adopted or if you were continue to just play it more, so good. Main deck in the Triple Eclipse, the Triple Droplet, looking good. There is the extra deck. And now we have Abamod 2. What about your deck list also? Not playing the Brightest Blazing. Here is the main deck, also with the Chaos Nephthys. And then there is the extra with an Anaconda. Not everyone playing Anaconda, right? If we were to look at that on the Anaconda branded, the majority are 65% to be fair. Let's keep on going to another deck type. We could look at the Purely which not only won the entire tournament, but also another Mad Lad topped with it. So Mobile X, congratulations on the win. 40 card clean, looking good. And then Kid Art also 40 card clean, main decking, Blackout laughs with no way to mill it. That is definitely interesting, but we discard it. Instead of, you know, initially a lot of purely players were playing Dark World cards for discard fodder and uh, even playing the Ghoster cards for discard fodder. If we use Blackout laughs for discard fodder, then we have even more disruption. 
That's definitely an idea, and it worked out. Thank you, Kid Art, for that idea. You don't have to just mill the black goat, just discard it. Basala, top eight, got the Piri Reese map, anything too crazy here, 40 card clean. Got the Chaos Angel, which I think is the best way to play it. Sniffus, 41 cards. Perry Reese map, got one, sure. Of course, Chaos Angel also in here. And then we have X Mada Midamaru. Sorry for saying your name incorrectly, I'm sure. And yep, looking very similar to the other builds. Nothing too crazy out of the ordinary. And uh, those are the three, right? One, two, three. And there you go. That is the entire top 16. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video next week or on twitch.tv slash Yeah, buddy.